Hello everyone, Kirby1 here, and I'm back for some more Twin Planes. So, uh, as you recall from the last video, we're just wrapping up crushing uh, Flegra's breaking siege attempt, knocking out his Dracon Pretender, and so a little bit of this is cleanup, and then uh, there's also a bit of a trap that we set for him, um, which we'll take a look at in a second. But uh, we hit our en enchantment four goal, and so that'll be twice burning our Lycanthrope's Amulet Pan. And uh, let's just go to the map because the battles are kind of all over the place. So this is just us pushing into one of Flegra's territories. Actually, this one is taking back one of ours uh, that Flagra had taken from us. And then uh, this is him raiding us here on the border of Inn's territory, and we'll take that back as well. And then we've got over here, that's the one where he attacked us. And this is us pushing up into Flegra's original northern lands, and this was the trap that we laid for him here, which was a successful catch. He has a bunch of Gigante warriors and Halots. We've got a kind of a bunch of random crap, but several sacreds. The centaurs I've got here on attack rear. There's some crossbows, which might have been mercenaries or might have been recruited troops here. He's got a guy that hasn't uh, got any gear up here. So we're just going to go ahead and hit him with a line of mannequins and put his guys to sleep. at this point, but we have caused an HP route. There is one carrion Titan already. There's another one just popped up right there. And I think we got enough black minotaurs as well to do some sufficient chopping. We had a little bit of PD in the mix as well, but we got him to HP route, so that was successful. Uh, so whatever is left must have retreated to here because this is a Nazcan province. And uh, so we lost most of the sacreds that we sent into this, picked up two carrion titans, and lost about half our mannequins. But it was worth it to nip that raid in the bud. Probably won't be coming back for more with whatever's left over here. And uh, other than that, we're picking up this province from Indies, and we're picking up this province, which was the Throne Province, and turns out to be the Throne of Law, so that'll get us into the double order digits from zero to two order across our dominion. And we're gonna decide to go down into the caves and pick up these two provinces instead of pushing in deep. Although, um, that is sort of uh, the second part of my ultimate strategy for this turn. So as you can see from scripting, my moves are now going straight into Nazca. And uh, I made this decision on this turn specifically. I think I was saying last turn that I didn't really feel like I wanted to antagonize Nazca too early, but I'm deciding to make it move now for two reasons. One, Flegra's main force and likely opportunity to break out of his cap has been neutralized, so I don't have to worry about that coming and doing a rear action on me. And secondly, uh, well, the Nazca player basically said, hey, thanks for saving me from Flegra, do you want a nap? And uh, I did that cheeky little thing that every Dominions player has done at least once in their life, which is to wait until the turn is ending to say, ah, uh, sorry, no, not interested. Oh, by the way, all my orders are in and I'm attacking you this turn anyways. So yeah, it happens. And uh, sorry, Nazca, but it happened to you this game. Uh, I do feel it's sort of a natural move for me just because I've wrapped this up. I've got a nap officially in-game with um, 
wick wiggles here of end so I don't have to worry about that even if he were to end it uh, immediately I would still have three turns to pretty much lock down most of Nazca's territory and I have a uh, I believe I have a um, discord nap with Agartha so don't have to be worried about that as well even though he's got some substantial um, forces on the border and if we recall from his bless it looks pretty uh, imprisoned so all of this is in play right now and would be a little bit of a thorn in my side if he were to attack me. As far as uh, visibility goes down in the caves I've got uh, a fort down here and I'll be recruiting uh, a mage for researching and then just doing all sorts of stuff like that but then also a little bit of fort defense just in case anybody decides to make any moves we see uh, Pelagia down here but also underwater here but he has moved his forces away from being directly next to me and then we see Agartha down here as well so he's really covering this whole area painting it black and then aside from that we see Oceania as well so yeah, my plans are uh, reconsolidate with all of my troops back onto the Fort of Flegra and break down that siege as quickly as possible. And then we're going to move immediately into Nazca with a little bit. Honestly, it's just taking this province and this province. Don't know what all uh, I'm going to encounter so it's just a little bit of light raiding oh in this one as well yeah forgot about that and so we're gonna sort of like circle up and around this will be primarily uh, an underwater capable force so that it'll be able to go right down here and then here later on and then this will wrap around this way and this will maybe go up around this way and we'll kind of circle up around his cap and then decide whether or not to drop onto it or wait a little bit uh, haven't decided quite yet so yeah uh, as far as recruitment goes we saw the one mage underground We've got another mage here with our usual setup of recruiting as many sacreds as possible and then another mage and a leadership mage this is what I consider the higher fonts and uh, and then this is the second turn of recruitment for panic apostate and there's our twice born going down so we've got twice born as well as construction three for underwater gear going on and then we're going to go into thaumaturgy a little bit and that's going for that's going for touch of madness here thaumaturgy four so that i'll be able to uh, drop that on some people in case of having to deal with the draco lich because of his fear aura which could cause problems if I don't get my guys berserk right away and then in addition to that we're gonna go up enchantment level 6 and that'll be a whole bunch of stuff relief foul vapors and then a horde of skeletons uh, and rigor mortis if we wanted that so all sorts of fun things and enchantment so yeah that's the plan there the big old betrayal and uh, yeah let's take a look real quick because there were a lot of events as well and part of that is due to the throne of misfortune so very very sad times we can't get rid of these wolves here um, and then on top of that we've got a plague but the ill winter taketh and the ill winter giveth we've got earth gems air gems and yeah, but with that throne of misfortune as well as our scales, we've got misfortune three in our cap. We're going up to misfortune four in some places. It's getting kind of ridiculous, and I am very sad. But it is what it is. Don't do misfortune, boys. It's a hell of a drug. All right, moving on. Next turn, turn 21. All right, here we are with turn 21. And we've got that twice born going down. We're doing a couple of site searching. Let's see if we got anything. No, a whole lot of nothing. So, oh well. Um, and construction is ready for water, underwater gear. 
and we've got the attacks on uh, Nazca. So let's go ahead and get into that. Uh, actually, we're going to start right over here because um, if you recall from last turn, uh, we had Mr. Flegra's cheeky raiding force was right over here. And uh, he decided to do that thing that he likes to do, which is bump onto uh, in's random territories and uh, knocked out this throne over here. So yay for me, I guess. This one would have been the throne of misfortune right here. And so uh, now in's going to have to go back and reclaim that. He cleared this out uh, all right with whatever he had left. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a bit silly of him to be antagonistic about that but oh well it is what it is I mean Flegra's dead so what is he gonna do just go ahead and wreck people's faces so um, yeah as far as my moves go I actually decide to take this whole group down here and pop this uh, province from Flegra instead of going underwater for whatever reason I don't think I really had any particular difference about it but we're going to go here, and then these guys are going to follow up shortly thereafter. Still haven't cracked Flegra, but that's to be expected. It's 1,500 wall strength. And then uh, we hit here, and here is actually... It looks like he just sort of stayed there with his army, which uh, is good for me because I have uh, my forces slightly set up so that... Uh, my leadership is not going to get hit by, well, I guess he wouldn't have gotten hit by, he might have gotten hit by attack rear, but, yeah, well, it worked out for me in the end because black centers are strong, I just plow through a bunch of Hatun Luna slaves. So, yeah didn't take too many losses. Uh, technically speaking, he didn't either, since this is a whole bunch of nothing chaff. His two Incas got away, which is half good, half bad. He could have used them as more Supaya summoners, I guess, if they had died. But in the meantime, I also move, move in on here. And so we're, uh, we're starting on the invasion. And we're going to go here, here, and here. Uh, it's kind of slow going for me. I could have gone with more, but I, I just didn't have a whole lot in the area in terms of a broad range of forces. It's just large groups so that he feels intimidated and doesn't feel like he can take anyone at a time. At least that's the hope at least. So we're going to go here and that'll cut off income for all of these provinces. We're going to go here and that'll cut off income from these provinces. And then that'll just leave him with this, this, this. And, uh, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, assuming he doesn't move out or anything like that. In the meantime, Nazca did wind up going here with a little bit of stuff. Well, I say a little bit, but that's four Koya's worth of stuff. Um, and so that would have hit my, my group here if I had sent that in. And I don't think these guys would have won. Uh, let's see, I mean, it's mostly the chaff of Supaya. The Dracolich by himself probably would have caused a, either a rout or killed most of the Black Centaurs on his own. So that would have been a loss for me, I think. So instead I took this and uh, noticed that Oceania wound up bumping here and taking that. So good thing I didn't have anything to send there. And this may or may not be a problem because he could either go here with that or up here with that and then cause me some real problems. So we'll we'll see if this turns into anything. I might have to react to that. But um, as far as his bless goes, it's fear and heroism. So interesting. Uh, I don't think that'll be a big problem for my mannequins particularly. So that's good at least. Aside from that, um, we're f going to be forging water breathing rings. I think just one for now. Let's see, one, two. Okay, we're going to do two. And so one will at least probably go to this guy. And then another one might go to maybe a harpy scout. If I wanted to do that, I could then start sending them 
into the caves and then into these caves and down underwater and see. Speaking of water, might have to keep an eye on that as well. Agartha is up here now, so that's a bummer. Was kind of hoping to get at least most of this island. And as I said, this is going to be going to end, as I promised him long, long ago. So, yeah. All right. So that's the plan. We're going here, here, and then we're putting the pressure on Nazca. And I'm actually going to ping his cap to see what all he's got in terms of patrolling. And that might sort of uh, dictate my decision on whether or not to jump onto his cap and put pressure on his income that way as well. Aside from that, um, oh yeah, there was one really massively annoying event that happened down here. Uh, we had this uh, necromancer attracted unwanted attention event and that was a necromancer that happened to be a panic apostate. Now normally you figure a panic apostate could take a ghost. He could do something like dust to dust or some other spell. He's usually pretty good about it but I guess he winds up doing a bunch of dumb stuff. There's a dust to dust and then decay of all things. Yeah, not super great. But uh, he winds up getting feared out of here and running out the back door and dying. Now the reason I had a panic apostate here in the first place is because uh, she had built a lab here and I was going to put a fort down there right now, this turn. I, as you can see, I've got 50 nature gems and so that's another fort wasted and uh, yeah, misfortune for you, even though there's a luck scale right here but it doesn't benefit me any since it's my province that's under enemy dominion so technically this counts as I think yeah um, luck or magic scale will not grant positive effects from it so technically this counts as luck zero so oh well but yeah just another one of those things that was the same thing that happened well in a similar vein to to this province over here so that's that's two forts that got delayed for growing. I mean, feels bad, man. Oh well. So here we are with a massive group on Flegra and we're just chipping down those walls. All right, we'll do one more turn and then we'll call it an episode there. Onwards to turn 22. All right, here we are, turn 22. We're up to Thaumaturgy 3 going on 4 for that, um, touch of madness in case we need it against the Dracolich. Speaking of the Dracolich, he has decided to put reverse pressure on me, counter rating. He's got pretty much all of his mages, I think, except for a couple of the Incas that we saw earlier. There's only one here. There's at least two from earlier. And then we've got a lot of Supaya and Hatun Runas. I do feel like this composition right here, if I put pressure on it, would just HP route itself because of the Hatun Runas, but it is what it is. And then uh, this is us pinging his cap, so he's got, looks like 25 PD there. Just put it back because he had been bumped off by Flegger earlier on, so he just put 25 PD back in there. And then other than that, no um, real competition. Uh, almost no losses from all of our movements and we're gonna wind up going underwater after all with a crap ton of overkill here but to be honest who knows how much PD he might have put down there maybe this is like shark tribe or something nasty so you never know uh, so he did strategically take this province which is smart of him because he gets the income for all of this in the meantime so I have cut him off from both of these though and this one as well so we're just gonna go ahead and ping again and see this guy is uh, huh, got diseased from something do we have uh, any more diseases no just a random disease I guess so we're actually gonna hold this province right here and we're moving a lot of stuff here and I might decide to since it's a forest lab and temple it right up in his face to get some infrastructure down so that I can decide when and at 
my leisure how I'm going to approach his cap attack since I'm just being super wary of the potential disruption factor of his Dracolich and he does have quite a bit of mage support so we'll see we'll just see how this goes in the meantime we're going underwater here with a bunch of crap technically this could be bad if there was some strong PD type here but I don't think there is and then uh, we're just going with a bunch of random crap in there as well, and Flegra's cap is cracked. So we're just going for it. We're not even going to ping it to see what's inside. We're just going to throw it all in there. Um, and just to be safe, as I always do, I'm moving something on top afterward. So this guy will be on here in case I do wind up dying and getting booted from here. But if I do, it's going to be a huge problem because most of the siege chaff is the mindless kind which would die and uh, I'd just have to siege it all over again and that would be really really annoying. Luckily for me we did not see uh, Oceania pop up and attack me. Super luckily for me we wound up seeing him go in on Agartha instead tying him up even more so that is great. And then um, Ind took that province as we see. And then over here, Ind took back his throne province. So I guess he probably just wound up booting whatever last remains were there of the Phlegran raiding force, which is good for me because then I don't have to worry about that Phlegran group coming back down around here. And I can send my full force over in this direction. Uh, aside from that, one of the uh, real funny events right here is this worldwide event here. A people's death match. And why is this funny, you may ask? Well, it's funny because I happen to have the perfect person to send in to the death match. My twice born lycanthropes amulet, Panic Apostate. He's gonna go in there, gonna kill himself off, and with any luck, he's gonna either win and not kill himself off, and then I'll just suicide him else somewhere else, or he's going to hand off his Lycanthropes amulet to somebody else, and that will be really funny to me. So uh, we're going to try that out for size. We actually have found a couple of uh, magic gem sites, so that is great, and I think we have our first terrain change of the game as well. A, has become a dense forest right here so that's uh, another opportunity for free forts so we're gonna get a lab and a temple this turn and we're gonna put a fort down there next turn so yay us unfortunately that's never gonna happen with either of these two throne provinces or we're gonna have to hold off there until we can get either better tech or just decide that it's worth putting a palisade on all right, other than that, I don't think that there's a whole lot going on. Yeah, so under underground, we've just basically got the same situation that it is. We see the Oceania player deciding to do a little something in uh, Agartha's lands. And we're going to be wrapping up Nazca as best we can. If all goes well with Flegra's cap, then this massive group, whatever's left, of the 350 troops are going straight north, and we're going to put the beat down on Nazca's cap. And we'll consolidate with everybody that's coming in from this direction and this direction. And yeah, so that'll be fun. I don't think we're doing anything with mercenaries. So there's the wet ones there. But other than that, they're kind of expensive for us because of being Asphodel. And as far as research goes, we're still doing the same. We're just going straight up enchantment. I think this is so that we can get um, Serpent's Blessing on top of having Foul Vapors. Because I think Foul Vapors will be pretty good. It probably won't get here in time for fighting Nazca. But if we decide to go from Nazca straight into Ind... Uh, that should be really good because Inn's Bless, as far as I recall, does not have poison resistance. So good for us. And then what else? Just take a quick, quick peek at 
recruitment. The reason I'm making mages here is again because of filling out my holy points and my capital. We've got uh, panic apostate. Uh, we're doing sort of alternating panic apostates there. This is just a little bit of cheap gold investment so that we can put the lab in the temple down here. At some point, I'll wind up picking up this forest province and putting a fort there. And then in our fort down in the caves, we're just putting um, pretty much dried hag on semi-repeat. There's a fort down there. All right, yeah, so that's the end of this turn, and we'll see you guys in the next turn. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.